have a picture of, well, there she is again. <clears throat> right. Oh, she's got a fabulous uh, yeah, figure, Yeah, these are some she? of the jobs that she has done. Now, that's not a turn-off to some people, is it, to see a, no, a lady with quite so pronounced a deltoids yeah, and quite, triceps and stuff? quite the opposite now. Mm -hmm. It's becoming a turn-on to most people. You it's know, everything right. is relative. If you were to look at this a few years ago, you'd say maybe it was a turn-off, but because people are now so much more aware of their bodies <clears throat> and wanting to look good, that is now quite the opposite. It's yeah, and that's Carla Dunlop, who is Carla. Ms. Olympia, and here are the ladies in person, Gladys Portuguese and Carla Dunlop. Nice to see you, Carla. How are you? And Gladys, Hi. nice to have you here, too. Thanks. We wanted to find out a little bit more about you. How long have you been lifting now? Four and a half years. Four and a half years. Mm -hmm. And why did you get started? Actually, I saw the very first Olympia, and I just saw this one woman that I really sort of liked her body, and I said, I kind of like to look like her. And yeah. from there on, I didn't think it was going to go this far. Were you, uh, were you underweight or overweight at the time? I was a twig. A twig, really <laughs> thin, huh? Yeah. Very thin. <laughs> Is it hard work? Very hard work. A lot of discipline. And what is your training period like? Uh, Two and a half hours, four times a week. Four times a mm -hmm. week. Good. And Carla, congratulations. Ms. Olympia, we Yay, have here. Olympia, she's the top. <laughs> yeah, that's terrific. And how long have you been uh, training? Uh, same, same amount of time as Gladys, mm -hmm. except that I came from another competitive sport. I'd been in synchronized swimming for 12 years. Oh, is that right? Yeah. And what, what prompted you to get involved? I was going to retire from swimming, and I needed some place to go. You know, you don't just drop from eight hours a day of swimming into the nine-to-five world. It's yeah. just, it's very hard to adjust. So I needed some place to go, and I was introduced to women's bodybuilding and asked what I thought about it. I entered my first contest six months before I started training, and I placed fifth in the best in the world out of 48 women. Good for you. Boy, so you, you pro well, you probably were so advanced because of all your swimming. Yeah, I did have a lot of muscularity. Now, what about the men in your lives? <laughs> All of a sudden, nothing. I guess they don't want to talk about it, so I'm going to change the subject. So what about the men in your life? <laughs> Do you have a boyfriend? <laughs> you start, you start. <laughs> God, he can't be that bad, can he? You can tell us about him. No, it's that I I'm travel so much. I've been uh, in athletics for so long that, mm -hmm. that most of my, my social life really centers around the gym, unfortunately. And um, since I travel a lot, I really do not have time to maintain a, a good relationship. A relationship. And what about you, Gladys? You're, you're sort of looking at him right next to you. <laughs> you're kidding me. Yeah. Brian over yeah. here? <laughs> Has he heard anything I've said so far? <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. I didn't know that. You two guys. I was going to ask, I mean, do you intimidate the men you meet what? when they find out you're Ms. Olympia and you're pumping iron for four and a half years? I mean, even, even our crew kind of backed away <laughs> when, you, when you came in. No, but really, what kind of impact do you make on a man when he finds out what you do? It depends on what I'm wearing. Uh-huh. I mean, if I'm wearing something... It's, it's really funny that way, though. The general public has this idea that we look flexed all the time. Yes and that we're in contest condition all the time. And I have a higher level of body fat right now than I would normally have at a contest. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, so if I'm wearing something that's complimentary to me as a woman and, and I'm usually you know, in normal clothes, uh, people just don't believe that you're a bodybuilder. But if you're wearing something like a sleeveless or something like that, they're automatically like... Double take. Sure, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I can imagine. It's a double take. Well, now let's see just how muscular you... Do you mind, Brian, if I touch no, her? No, that's okay. okay. Why don't you make a little muscle, right? Wow, that, I'm telling you, that's some muscle. <laughs> now, let's just see the deltoid over here. This is my Ah, she's as hard as a rock. Yeah, I mean, well, she really muscle. has great definition. Yeah. Is it easier for a woman to get that, those cuts in that definition? Well, it really has nothing to do with the sex of the person. It has to do with how much body fat the person has. If someone has a reduced body fat, then they appear to be muscular. Uh -huh. So the muscle is there. I think both of these women are actually pretty well genetically gifted to a certain extent, to have taken it this far. Yeah. <clears throat> but the normal person can reduce their body fat level to an extent that they can then see the muscles start to peek through the skin sure. a little bit. Would you give us a posing exhibition? Sure. Oh, we'd love to see it, okay? Carla and uh, Gladys yeah. coming up next in a little posing exhibition right here on our stage. Back in a moment. <laughs> There's more than just grapes in most frozen grapes. A sexual aroma.
continue now with Brian Morse, who is uh, more or less the trainer of these <clears throat> two ladies, aren't you? Right, I train Gladys primarily. I'll right. bet you do, yeah. <laughs> right. Anyway, but, uh, before, before we get started, uh, just myself and the ladies, in appreciation for everything you've done for the sport and Better Bodies, you're always promoting bodybuilding when nobody else is and weightlifting. We just like to present you with this well, plaque, nice. just in appreciation. Thank you very much. A lifetime always, member of Better Bodies Incorporated. You're always mm -hmm. promoting the sport. Thank you, Brian. I really appreciate, appreciate this. It's a lovely plaque that they're giving me here. And I thank you very, very no much. Problem. Now, just before they start to pose, every bodybuilder <clears> goes through a little warm-up period, right? Right. It's called the pump-up. At most shows, there'll be a pump-up room. There'll be light weights. And at that point, what they're trying to do is get that blood rushing through the muscle, fill up the veins, because the judges are looking for muscularity and the vascularity, which you start to see come out in the girl's arms as they start to pump up all that blood, as I say, is rushing to the muscle, Boy, which they, is sort of what they're doing here. They really have phenomenal builds. Uh, yeah, well. Beautiful bodies. Are you all set? Sure. All right, fine. Well, that's generally what they would do uh, backstage before the right. contest. And let's get into a little posing exhibition right now with Gladys Portuguese and Carla Dunlap. very much for being with us today, Gladys Portuguese and Carla Dunlap, and we thank you very much. It's just terrific. Right back with Dr. Diane Meyer in just a moment. Stay with us.